Welcome to episode four of the AI Practitioner Exam Byte series. You all know the drill now. Let's start by looking at the review question from last episode, asking us to identify what types of data are being used to train this AI model to predict customer sentiment. The correct answers are A, text, C, labeled data, and F, unstructured data. Because the training data, written customer reviews are text-based, they are labeled because the reviews are labeled as positive, negative, or neutral, and the data is unstructured as it's just free form text. So let's move on to our exam objective for today. Describe supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and reinforcement learning. Now I want you to cast your minds back to yesterday when we discussed the different types of data in AI models, particularly labeled and unlabeled data. With labeled data, each piece of data called a training example has a corresponding label identifying or tagging what that data is. So the example that we used yesterday was images of flowers. So I'm just drawing some very ordinary images of flowers here. You can kind of see I work in tech and I'm not a drawer right now, can't you? There we go. <laughs> And then we have a label identifying what each of these are. So this first one we might say is a sunflower. Second one over here might be a daisy. Very poorly drawn daisy, but you get what I mean. And this one over here might be a rose. All right, so we feed this label data into a machine learning algorithm. So all of this will go into our machine learning algorithm down here. And the algorithm will learn to identify the different types of flowers. So as you can probably tell, we're doing a machine learning training here. So if I put a kind of box around all of this here, this is all training. Now at the conclusion of the machine learning training process, the machine learning algorithm outputs a machine learning model, which is essentially that computer programming, or a computer program I should say, with all the knowledge and learnings from the training. So out pops our ML model. And we can then present an image of a flower which the model hasn't seen before. In other words, it hasn't seen during training. So let's say we present it with another stunningly drawn image of a flower, like, like that. <laughs> and what the machine learning model can do is it's going to output a prediction as to what that flower is. So it might say, hey, I'm 90% confident it's a rose. Now, the process that I've described here is called supervised learning. We call it supervised because the process is analogous to learning under the supervision of a teacher. Now we use labeled data like a teacher providing the correct answer for each question. And because we know the correct answers, the algorithm learns by comparing its predictions to the correct labels, adjusting its model to minimize errors, similar to how a teacher guides a student by correcting mistakes. But what happens if we want to use unlabeled data instead? Well, the training process is similar. We provide each training example, like images of flowers that we saw before, to the machine learning algorithm, but there's no labels, so it doesn't actually know what the data is. So this means if we present it with an image of a flower it hasn't seen before, then it can't tell us what it is. So it can't do what we did just here with supervised learning, because it doesn't even know what the data is. But what it can tell us is that it's similar to other images. So it says, well, I don't know what this image is, but it certainly looks similar to these other images. And we call this unsupervised learning. And it's great for doing things like clustering or anomaly detection, as it doesn't care about what the data actually is. It just looks at similarities between the data. Now, the final type of learning we're gonna look at is reinforcement learning. Now, this is a very different 
approach to supervised and unsupervised learning. It's essentially learning by trial and error. During training, the machine learning algorithm tries things. If it does the correct thing, as defined by the machine learning developer, it receives a reward, which is just a numerical number. If it does the wrong thing, it receives no reward. And its goal is to maximize rewards over time, so it learns that to do this, it needs to do the right thing more often. And this is just like training a dog. So when the dog does the right thing, you might give it a treat. But when it does the wrong thing, you might withhold that treat. And over time, the dog learns that to get treats, it needs to do the right thing. So you're incentivizing good behavior. Let's do a review question before we wrap up this episode. A data scientist wants to group customers into distinct categories based on their purchasing behavior, but doesn't have predefined labels for these categories. Which type of machine learning approach is most appropriate for this task? Is it A, federated learning? B, supervised learning? C, unsupervised learning? D, reinforcement learning? I'll reveal the answer in our next episode. I'll see you then.